my hope for Neo The World Ends With You was not necessarily that it would answer every hanging plot thread that had been left at the end of The World Ends With You, a game I loved 14 years ago on the Nintendo DS. Instead, I hoped it could recapture the feelings of growth and connection that made the original so special. Neo is a welcome homecoming, with a flashy signature style and entertaining combat mechanics that were translated surprisingly well to the Switch. But in its eagerness to revisit old stories and characters, Neo left itself little room to reach an emotional peak of its own. Neo The World Ends With You takes place in a ghostly parallel version of Shibuya, Japan, where the deceased are sent to play a sadistic, week-long Reaper's game for the right to return to life. The passive new protagonist, Rindo, and his charming cinnamon roll of a best friend, Fret, are sent to this alternate reality and are later joined by the fangirlish Nagi and the math-obsessed Minamimoto. It's a similar setup to the first game, but with the interesting new twist that the deceased players can form large teams and work together as a group to win the game. This welcome change allows Neo to explore dynamics between a much larger cast of named characters, broadening the potential for interesting relationships. Shibuya is a delight to explore, stuffed with fashion, food, music, and culture. Some of the best objectives in Neo involve getting to know the city, whether that's by exploring its urban legends or seeking out notable landmarks. I loved popping into restaurants to stuff my characters with mouth-watering ramen, piles of fluffy pancakes and spicy curry, or revisiting shops chapter after chapter to see what hot new threads were in stock. And inseparable from all this is Neo's music, which is, from start to finish, one of the most bopping game soundtracks I have ever heard. Alongside its joyous portrayal of Shibuya, what impressed me throughout Neo were the numerous ways in which it was able to translate the spirit of the original's combat onto a very different platform. Its battle system centers around a 3D action combo system and plenty of customizability via collectible, equipable pins that correspond to different physical, elemental, melee, and ranged attacks. I was delighted to see that Neo didn't skimp on the sheer number and diversity of pins available, and that library expands even further when you crank up the difficulty. Finding the right pin combinations is especially critical thanks to a satisfying groove system that rewards you with powerful finishers for correctly timing moves and chaining attacks between different characters. The thrill of pulling off pristine combos by tossing control back and forth between characters was a peak I chased the entire game. And what will he do next? Time to take out the trash! I spent a decent chunk of the roughly 40 to 50 hour campaign experimenting to find those moments, as often I wouldn't have an ideal combination of pins in my arsenal just yet to make combat feel as fluid as I knew it could. Getting pumped! Great job! <laughs> the moments when I hit those good vibes are what will ultimately stick with me about Neo's battle system, but the groove had its missteps too. The later hours of Neo have a number of boss battles with some truly fascinating setups, but its dodge and camera controls don't always keep up. And because you can only control one character at a time, the AI is left to manage the rest of your party and will often walk them directly into attacks that you correctly dodged, meaning you might lose a fight here or there despite doing everything right. I also ran into a few annoying bugs in battles, especially in later chapters, including a game crash at the start of a dramatic boss fight. There were multiple situations where enemies mysteriously got launched outside the official boundaries of the battlefield, making them nearly impossible to hit. From a story perspective, Neo is as direct a sequel to The World Ends With You as one could want, and I was satisfied with the ways in which it answered dangling questions from that game. In fact, I highly recommend either playing The World Ends With You Final Mix or watching the anime before playing Neo if you haven't yet. 
While the characters try their best to summarize certain major events, the intricacies of that story can be difficult to follow if you're just listening to their rushed explanations. What Neo unfortunately leaves behind in its success as a direct story sequel are its new, original characters. While most of the cast gets occasional moments of depth and development, they never quite reach the heights of the character arcs in the first game. When they do get a bit of development, it's usually all smashed into one day with little buildup. Defying his teachings will do me little good. Right, gotcha. As someone who adored The World Ends With You as a teenager and waited eagerly for a sequel for over a decade, I found myself feeling a bit conflicted about Neo's story, especially in its spoiler-heavy later chapters. A lot of the conclusions it came to rested on emotional highs I experienced 14 years ago, dulling their impact somewhat. I would have rather seen Neo spend more time embracing the interesting set of new characters it put at the front of all of its marketing. Neo finishes what its predecessor started well enough. I just wish it hadn't sacrificed its own story to do so. Neo The World Ends With You is a sequel that leans heavily on recapturing what made the original so special. That's to its benefit in some ways, such as its lively depiction of Shibuya, its incredible soundtrack, and its stylish, flowing combat system, but to its detriment in others. Its story satisfied me as someone who's been waiting 14 years for answers to The World Ends With You's most tantalizing mysteries, but it pays for that resolution by sidelining its new central cast and foregoing a hard-hitting emotional story of its own. For more, check out our reviews of Death's Door and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. And for everything else, stick with IGN.